Hey there. All right. It's me again. I'm back. It's like uh, late in the evening. Uh, I think it's like past nine o'clock on a Saturday. Again, I don't have a social life. So, you know, it's that time of the evening again wherein I get into social media and I get like uh, two of the same questions from friends. So, uh, instead of just stating facts, having a little discussion. Oh, what's the 38 doing on my night? Huh, that's junk right there. Huh. Anyway, so before I move on and uh, start uh, discussing stuff about uh, uh, with relative ease, look at that, 40 cal, I mean, my God, man. Anyway, before my mind steers off somewhere else, uh, I have two friends that have asked me, hey, uh, Marcus, define... Uh, uh, defensive rounds or what do you use for uh defensive rounds or what what's your firearm uh that that you use as a as a carry as a personal carry and uh yeah and and that, that kind of caught me off track because you'd think that uh there'd be some more uh a little bit more non-basic questions that they direct me uh so i, I tried to help out and explain to them certain stuff so i said since I have like a few more bullets here that I need to reload on my 9mm uh, brass, uh, I'm, I'm on my 5th, uh, I'm, uh, I'm plus 400 plus rounds here, 500 plus rounds. So I thought that uh, before I close this off and end this discussion, uh, let's answer that question. But before I do that, just to let you know. This isn't what I do for a living. I'm really a realtor at heart, right? So, you know anybody moving to the Pacific Northwest, especially military, please let me know. I got to work for a living too, you know. That that retirement pay just ain't enough for me. So, yes, <laughs> kidding aside, uh, to the men and women out there that are serving, if you're out there and you're deployed, I salute you. It's been a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor to observe. All right, so you guys take care. Anyway. So what the question of the day for me is, uh, Marcus, uh, what's a good self-defense round? Okay, well, let's answer it this way, right? You'll probably notice that I am reloading 9mm brass, 9mm, right? Brass with 115 grain. 115 grain uh, round nose berries bullet uh, that's the final product right there using uh, what am I using type group powder between 4.8 to 5.5 grains that's it so you're probably concluding that hey you know what his uh, personal carry Self-defense round is a 9 millimeter. Well, not really. I'm not going to beat around the bush. My personal carry is... It's right here, right beside me. It's a 40 caliber HNK. Okay? Now, you're probably wondering, why am I reloading 9 millimeters if I'm... If my personal carry... So to answer the question, what... Is your self-defense round for lack of a better term it's 40 cal but i am also well versed i'm actually more well versed shooting since i was a youngster before my teens 45 caliber pistols back home in 1911 uh colt 1911s primarily is what is just available back home unlike 50 years later fast forward to now uh, you know, you have these 2011s, you have these awesome uh, HNKs and SIGs, uh, the 226s and the 220 series uh, that are just phenomenal weapons. So, so before I actually move on and on and on, uh, we can talk about this forever. What made me go? Uh, first of all, why am I reloading 9 millimeters? Why? Because they're cheap, right? As compared to 30 years ago, the 9mm bullet 
just wasn't capable enough for stopping power. Now you could you got this hollow points that kind of expands and turns into like screws and 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 just hits harder with better powder, etc. etc. Okay, so that's why. And the default value, I mean the default bullet that is kind of used nowadays is your nine millimeter. They're very, very uh for practical use, they're just all over the place and, and and there's just so many types of firearms i have two of them uh nine millimeters a sig and a an, uh, smith and wesson uh one of them is going to my daughter uh that i use uh they're practical they're efficient and they still hit and capacity i mean you could put i think glocks now have 21 to 22 rounds or more that's just amazing right so, uh, and, and it doesn't recoil much, and that's why. So, but why did I move over to a 40? It's just because uh, my very first firearm in America, which I bought in 1993, I think, 1993 or 1992, 1993 when I became a U.S. citizen, yes, uh, was a Sig Sauer P22, uh, P229, which was a 40 cal. Um, love that firearm. As a matter of fact, that firearm is heading towards a possession of my son. I'm giving my son a 40 and I'm giving my daughter a 9. Okay? Uh, you're probably wondering, my daughter a 9 because she's probably able to control it better. You're right. Absolutely. Anyone can control a 9 better than a 40, a 45, or even a, even a 10 mil. 10 mils are just... They just go kaboom, okay? Uh, and the advantage of a 40 is that it just, you know, I, I don't listen to all these uh, stats and what all these uh, 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 experts say. They say that nine just have better stopping power than a 40. You know, last time I checked, a 40 is, is basically a little bit wider uh and a little bit heavier so you tell me uh and besides uh i can still all right let's empty this out all right there's nothing in the chamber all right decock it put it back in there uh i can still put 12 rounds in this thing okay i know i know uh washington state you can't i purchased this before the law came out that's saying that you can't purchase anything above 10 rounds now uh, that was purchased in, uh, I don't know, four years ago, I think. I'm not even sure. But I'll show you the receipt if anybody asks, right? So, and, and uh, I am just comfortable because, wow, that kind of stuck. I don't move my uh, brass when they're for pistols. I mean, I don't think they're going to stick anyway. So, anyway, uh... For 40, the grip on this thing, one advantage I have is that it's not as big as a 45, so I can grip it. I can grip it really well, all right? And that being said, grip to me is the most important variable on which firearm to purchase and then correlates it to which caliber of a bullet that you're going to use, what you're comfortable with. What's the point? of carrying a 10 millimeter 10 millimeters are a little bit longer right so the grip is a little bit stockier uh for stockier hands and i got small hands so a 10 millimeter isn't going to work for me a 45 even though it's a 45 caliber round is short is short is fat and short and unless you have a 2011 we'll be able to use uh, multiple rounds and will, will it really be impractical for my grip so a 40 for me is the best grips for nines that are just 10 rounders are i think is the best but then why carry a 10 round nine mil if you could carry a 10 round uh a 40 right there you go and also uh let's let's talk about so now to conclude this matter uh what i'm saying now is any caliber will work, even a 38, I do believe. All right, because 
now it allows you to be more comfortable at what particular firearm at what particular caliber that you are used to okay uh sure let's get a 357 desert eagle you know but if you're not able to control that round what is the purpose of carrying you know 10 plus rounds in a magazine of a desert eagle am i correct you're able to hit some god forbid uh that's where i'm coming from it doesn't matter what you're using as long as you are comfortable with a firearm with the ammunition and with the size caliber of the round go for it all right that brings up a good analogy here when it comes to self-defense uh masad ayub google his name very well known individual in the law enforcement world uh let me just give this tip that he gave in a video that i saw when it comes to self-defense the difference between this era the society we live in right now and the society 20 30 years ago is very very simple folks nowadays treat self-defense differently as when it was 20 30 years ago self-defense during that time is self-defense now it seems like everybody's carrying a gun and everybody that is not trained to carry a firearm seems to be including most people that are well known enthusiasts shooters or the likes the term self-defense goes over the top now it seems like most firearm owners once trouble comes out they seek the trouble they go to the trouble well that's not self-defense all right so self-defense is stay away from trouble you run away from trouble uh and i think that is the best thing that i have taught myself my kids that uh, something happens don't antagonize don't intimidate uh stay away from trouble you just stay away from trouble okay especially in this era of mass shooting you know just stay away from trouble don't seek for it stay away uh don't 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 intimidate anybody else right don't antagonize anybody else we we, we seek most people just seek out and, uh, seek out uh discussions heated arguments etc etc and that's where the shootings come into play right so it's it's a thought process think about what you're going to do first because if it's not really for self-defense there's no point in owning this all right so hopefully you guys understand where i'm coming from and understand i kind of veered away from the topic uh so to conclude this matter whether it be nine mil 40 cal 45 10 mil 38 22 if you're efficient at it that's my go-to uh defensive round all right you guys take care enjoy the evening and next time i talk to you guys you know send me some questions if you guys got any all right you guys take care enjoy the evening bye-bye